In this video, we wanted to discuss our suggestions for which camera you should get for astrophotography. There are so many different options, hundreds of options out there, so it can be very confusing for a beginner to know what you can expect with each camera. Exactly! So, whichever camera you decide to purchase, one thing is clear. It'll quickly become your best friend under the stars. A camera will allow you to capture astronomical objects millions of light years away from where you're standing, even if you don't own a telescope. Wow, very nice. So that's right, you don't need a telescope to photograph galaxies or nebulae. We have a video about this, by the way, if you want to check it out, that proves that you can take beautiful pictures with just a tripod and a camera. So have a look. Right. So let's talk about DSLR cameras, OSC cameras, and monochrome cameras. So the first thing is DSLR cameras. So DSLR slash nowadays mirrorless cameras are very popular for Astro. Um, it's likely what we would recommend for most beginners to get, especially if you've never done any photography before. Um, but we'll keep this section short for one big reason. Yes. So if you're a beginner, the best camera to start with is the one you already have. Chances are you probably have an old DSLR camera from your photography era just lying around somewhere, or maybe you have access to a camera that belongs to someone you know. And if they're cool with it, they'll let you borrow it. So no matter the situation, grab that one. And honestly, it does not matter at all how old it is. We started with a pre-owned Canon T3i, and it was great for starting out. And if you don't have access to a DSLR camera, then we suggest purchasing a used camera from eBay or another a reputable site. Um, we gravitate to the Canon brand, but truthfully, um, there is not much preference. The Nikon ones are also very good for Astro. If you're looking for a Canon camera, uh, look for the latest in the TXI series. At the time of this video, I think the latest version is the Canon T8i. Mm -hmm. So try to find a pre-owned version or buy an older uh, T3i, T4i, it doesn't matter, as close to it as possible. So if you're set on buying a new fancy DSLR or mirrorless camera, some good options that we suggest are the 5D Mark IV, as well as modified DSLR cameras that are created specifically for Astro, like the Nikon D810A or the Canon RA. But for that one, hopefully you can find it used because it's been discontinued. Yeah, sad. It was good. So if you want to jump in headfirst and start with a cool camera right off the bat, or just want to upgrade from your current DSLR camera, then here are some great options for cooled one-shot color cameras. The ASI 533MC and the QHY 533C from QHY are great entry-level OSC cameras. They both have a resolution of 9 megapixels, a 3.76 micron pixel size, and a square sensor. So the square sensor is what intimidates people the most from this camera because almost all other astronomy and DSLR cameras have a rectangle sensor. But don't be scared. Next would be the ASI 2600MC, which is right here, or the QHY 268C. So these two cameras are pretty much the same, 99% the same, and they're both the most popular ones right now. They share what matters the most, which is the IMX571 sensor, a 3.76 pixel size and 26 megapixels in resolution. You cannot go wrong with either of these and this is our current uh, one-shot color camera at home. The ASI 6200MC and QHY 600C are the full-frame versions of the cameras we just talked about. They are more expensive, but they'll give you a wider field of view with the full-frame sensor and they have 60 megapixels, which is huge. Despite being expensive, we believe that these cameras will stay at the top of the full-frame camera category for years to come. Now, let's talk about the monochrome cameras. So monochrome cameras are the monochrome versions of one-shot color cameras. These are the ones with the steepest learning curve, and that's because you need to use filters and combine different channels into one color image uh, during processing. So because the OSC cameras we mentioned are the best, in our opinion, the best camera for monochrome are the exact same ones, but monochrome, but monochrome. version. <laughs> yeah. So first we have the ASI 533MM and QHY 533M. These cameras are the same as their color versions, with a resolution of 9 megapixels, a pixel size of 3.76, and a tiny 1-inch square sensor. The small sensor is great if you're on a budget because it allows you to use affordable filters instead of larger expensive ones. 
Next would be the ASI 2600mm and QHY 268 m So with a very low read noise and 26 megapixels, this is one of the best crop sensor monochrome cameras available for the price. This year at least. And they are often out of stock, so be careful with that. Uh, which makes sense because they're so popular. So we recommend 2 inch filters for these cameras, which can be expensive to add. And then lastly we have the ASI 6200mm and the QHY 600M. The current flagship full frame cameras from both ZWO and QHY with 60 megapixels plus and very, very low, low noise and a pixel size of 3.76 UM. And these two cameras are the pretty much almost identical and they're absolute monsters, like beasts. Like when we say beasts, like beasts. We use the QHY600 and have a full review and you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, we did both the color and monochrome versions and you can see that on our website. And so these were released in 2020 and these two are still the best full frame cameras for amateur astrophotographers. So they have a hefty price tag at $4,000 plus dollars. And also you also have to count the additional cost of the filter wheel and the filters you will need. So the price goes up pretty fast. Mm not fun but if you can get it you should get it deciding which camera to get can be tough especially when you have a budget and your skill set to consider so we hope that this video made it easier and brought up things that you might not have considered and we'll have links for all the cameras that we talked about in the description below and fingers crossed that the one that's right for you is not out of stock <laughs> and many of our images online were taken with those cameras so go check it out as well and remember that if you're just picking up astrophotography, there is no need to spend billions on full gear immediately. Just get your feet wet um, you know, and just try to learn the basics of shooting the night sky without a telescope. And get a cheap DSLR camera and a star tracker, and I can assure you, uh, you will have much more enjoyment in your journey. And at least you'll be able to upgrade as needed. So if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail, as the great Taylor Swift uh, said. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Yes, guys. Peace, guys. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant.org is a platform that will help you learn more about several types of sciences, including astronomy. No matter what you like most, Brilliant.org will help you master these skills, regardless of what level you're at. The thousands of lessons available are really easy to follow, and most importantly, interactive which I believe helps so much in learning new skills. You can go through the lessons on your computer, phone, or tablet and learn at any pace. There is new content made available on a monthly basis with, I am sure, more awesome astronomy-specific lessons over time. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for 30 days free, visit the link below in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.